Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to detect touches within your Swift applications. So on the simulator here, an example of what we're going to be creating today. We have three labels which then indicate the type of touch that has been interacted on the screen. For example here, we have the method of the touch whether it began, whether it's moving, or whether the touch has ended, the method will display what basically is happening with the touch. Our touches here will display how many touches are on the screen, or you can think of it, if you touch the screen with three fingers, then it will display the number three within our touches section. And then we have the number of taps, so we can tap simultaneously 10 times, it will count to 10, and then once we stop and then we start again, it will restart the counter and start counting again. So if I show you, if I click, you can see that the touches has begun, the number of touches on the screen are one, and the number of taps are two. Now, as soon as I let go, it still calculates that there was one touch, there is no more taps, and the touches have now ended. Now, if I was to do something like click down and start moving, you can see that the touches now state that the touches are moving. So with all of these, you can create actions depending on what the state of the touch is. Now I can tap multiple times and you can see as I do it, it says touches begin and end every time I click the mouse and it counts our taps up. But then once I stop and then begin again, it then restarts the counter and begins counting upwards. I can also simulate having a secondary finger on the screen within the simulator. If you hold down Alt, you have our two fingers here and if I click them at the same time, you can see that the touches now displays two, as if there was two fingers on the screen. So like I said before, you can create actions on everything that is basically happening. So already in my project set up, is a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it Touches Swift for the purpose of this tutorial. Now to get all set up, we need to head over to our main Dutch storyboard, which we're already in. And I'm just simply gonna change it to an iPhone size screen. And we're gonna add in the three labels that will allow us to display um, the um, state of our touches. So we just scroll down now and add the label in. And space that out and I'm gonna center it and make sure we've got three all together. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is just rename each of these to something um, relevant in terms of when we display it on the screen. So this one is obviously our method. Maybe their colon there. This one is our simple touches. So how many touches are basically happening on the screen. And then this is finally how many taps are basically happening. There we go. Once they're all centered, I'm just gonna select them all and quickly add in some missing constraints just so they've resized for the different screen sizes. And then I'm gonna bring up the assistant editor. And then what we're gonna do now is space out the outlet section. I'm gonna add an outlet for each of these so we can refer back to them and display the data from within them. So I'll start with the method one. I'll simply name this method label and I'll repeat the process for all the rest of them. So this is our touches label and then finally our taps label. There we go. We've added all those in. So we can close that up now and go back to our standard editor and then jump straight into our view controller.swift where we can now begin to code the rest of um, the actions. So how this works, and if I just close this up here, is there is no particular action in terms of creating a button to trigger something. It all happens when the screen um, is basically being interact with. So what we need to do first then, if we quickly go back to the main Dutch storyboard, we need to enable our screen for multi-touch, which is just here. We make sure you click on the screen and it says multi-touch, so we enable that. And then we go back to our main um, view controller.swift. So what I'm going to do is space out now because we're going to create some override functions. So I space that out quite nicely and we start here. So what we're going to do is have touches began. And we just type that in and then it will give our override a function. So what touches began is, is the moment your screen has been interacted with your finger. So the moment you touch your finger, something is going to basically happen. Now let's get rid of that for now. The second one we're going to be using is touches moved. So as soon as your finger starts to move on the screen, what do you basically want to happen? And then finally, we want touches ended. 
So what happens when the user then takes their finger off the screen, we can perform a certain action. So these are the three methods we're going to be using, and each one is going to do a different thing. So we're going to do, we start with touches begin then. We're going to create our let for our tap count. Uh, so we do touch count is going to equal the amount of touches dot count. So that's what we were creating there. So our little kind of, think of it as our little variable. So depending on how many touches it counts is going to equal to touch count, which we're then going to display in our label momentarily. Repeat the process for our, again, let, and this time we're going to do the type of touch that happens on the screen. So we do, see what I put in touch, it's going to equal our touches dot any object as touch. Oops, sorry, not touch, sorry, UI touch. There we go. And then finally, we need our tap count. So again, let, and I simply call this tap count to then equal, again, our touch dot tap count. So that's basically going to display or link all of the um, kind of outputs on terms of how many tap counts is, how many touch counts, uh, what type of touch, and it's going to equal it to our let's here. Now we need to get those and display them on the screen, and that's where the labels come into play. So we space down now, and then type out our first one, which is our method uh, label. And what we're going to do then is get the dot text feature of our label, and we're going to equal it to a string. Now the string we're going to equal this one to is method, as that's what we have typed in our label, and this is our touches begin um, function statement. So we want touches begin, and it's simply going to display that. Now if I copy and paste this just two more times, because these next two labels are going to be a little bit different. As this is a simpler straight piece of text, the others are kind of bits of data. So we change this from method label to simply our touches label. Just there it is. And instead of saying method here, we want it to simply state out touches. And instead of saying touches begin, we're not going to have a piece of string it's going to equal to. What it's going to equal to is our basically our touches um, count. So we do the backslash there. And there are two parentheses there. In between here, the name of our let which we created. And that is simply touch. Count, that's what we want in there. So basically what's going to happen then, like I said before, it's going to have touches, colon, space, and our um, touch count um, displayed directly after it. So depending on how many touches it's basically kind of recognized, it will equal it then to our touch count, which then gets displayed within our string, uh, within our touches label. Again, now we go into our third and final one, so taps label, and I'll just change this method here to taps, and this is exactly the same again, this is going to display how many taps it recognizes on the screen. So this is our tap count. So quickly, good to build and run, and I'll show you exactly how this is going to work. So the other two statements at the moment won't work as we don't have anything placed within them. But as soon as we click on the screen, you can see that our method is touches begin as we have set it within the string. We have our touches label will equal our letter of touch count. And you can see there it says touches one. And then finally our taps equals the amount of taps it recognizes, which at the moment is only been one because I've only clicked once. And as soon as we let go, nothing's happened because we have nothing within our two other override function statements. So jump back in there, and the, what we can simply do is simply copy and paste it into both of them, and we just need to configure the individual different types of text and stuff it needs to basically display. And all we need to do is change what the touches is. So we'll have touches moved, and then finally, touches ended. The um, the count, uh, the touch count and the tap count will stay the same, as we don't really need to change anything there. So this time we go to build and run. You can see now that once we click on the screen, it recognizes touch is begin. We move, it will say touch is moved. And then once we end, it will say touch is ended. 
we can tap as many times as we want. The touch is ended and begin start and it will count how many taps we do in a single session. And then if we go to simulate having a secondary finger on the screen, you can see that it now says touches two. And we go back to one, two, one, two. So that's simply how you detect touches on your screen within the Swift language and how you can perform certain actions depending on what touch has been recognized by the screen. So I hope this helps in your apps or projects at the minute and I'll see you all guys next time. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links to this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.